Hello again, my friends. It is so good to see you. Welcome to my channel. I'm so happy that you're here. Today's video is a very, very exciting, exciting video. Today's video, I am shooting a collaboration with one of my most favorite content creators here on YouTube, and that is Susan from The Little Poet. I was so excited when Sue happened to mention that she would be interested in doing a collab with me, and I am just, I, I, I fangirl over her. Her content is fantastic, fantastic content. She is such a sweet, wonderful, wonderful woman in her 60s, reinventing her life, reinventing herself, and staying young in the process, I have to say. It's doing things like this, pushing outside of the envelope, doing unusual things for your age group, you know, whatever that means, keeps you young. And I think that she is a fantastic, fantastic storyteller. She puts out such beautiful content, and uh, I'm very, very happy to be collaborating with her. I am honored, Susan, I am honored to be collaborating with you. Thank you so much for inviting me. Enough fangirling, let's go ahead and rein it in and let's talk about what this video is about. It is a fashion tag, so let's go ahead and dive in. How would you describe your style? What has been your history with clothes and establishing a wardrobe? I describe my style as a uh, romantic dramatic. And that's because it aligns very closely with my own personality. I think that when you give yourself a label as far as like, I'm a cla you know, I dress in a classic way or I'm a traditional or I'm boho or whatever. Before you put that label on, you have to really understand yourself and understand who you are as a person. Because I believe that, well, fashion is about, you know, body type and things like that. But style is a little bit more than that. Actually, it's a lot more more than that. I would say that that is how I classify myself again, because I know myself very well and I understand how personality type and body type kind of work together to create your personal style. It has taken me a while to get words around it, but I've always known that I really love very feminine clothes. I don't do very well in very like structured clothing. I mean, I can wear it and I think I can pull it off because I've got a very dramatic flair to me and it's all about the yin and yang of my personality type. But my preference is definitely the more romantic, the more feminine, the flowy stuff, you know, just very girly, very womanly type clothing. Um, so that is how I would describe my style. I came to this style, I guess, just over time, you know, as my personality developed, but my mom was my, my first personal stylist is what I call her. She was a seamstress and she would dress me in clothes that she would get secondhand from her lady friends because she used to clean houses. So her, her wealthy lady friends from whom she used to work for, or she would make me clothes. And so my wardrobe was kind of a mix of the two and she always loved dressing me up and I liked it. I really, really loved that. I actually, when I was in elementary school, I would dress up on Fridays. In today's world, Fridays are the dress down day. For me, when I was a little girl in first grade, Friday was the dress up day. And I would dress in my Sunday best on Fridays because I wanted to look really super pretty and all of that, you know, and that was just my day for looking really pretty. So my mom would accommodate me by either making me a dress or pulling out something that I wore to church. So, um, yeah. That's, that's kind of my style history. I learned a lot about personal style from my mom um, at a very, very, very young age. I mean, I used to help her sew some clothes. You know, I, that's how I learned how to do hems and, and how to take in clothes and do a couple of different things with sewing was from her. So she is really the cornerstone, I think, of how my personal style developed. What are the three most important things you consider when buying your clothes? So I have to say that because I'm in the personal stylist and influencer, you know, line of work, I shop for clothes differently, I think, than a normal consumer. Because a lot of the times when I buy clothes, I'm buying it with a couple of things in mind. First of all, I've got you guys in mind when I'm buying stuff. Is this something that you would like? Is this something that I think that would resonate with you? 
when it's stuff for me for me because sometimes a more a majority of the time what ends up happening is that i keep some of what i buy and i guess some of it is a purchase that's been driven by me personally when I take a look at clothes for myself that I'm actually going to buy and wear myself, once you get through that initial, when I get through that, then what I start doing is I start thinking about, okay, how is this going to work in my wardrobe? How is it going to look on me? Am I going to be able to create multiple outfits with this garment? So those questions really are the basis of my decision. I try not to shop impulsively. I try to be very thoughtful about what I am buying. I am working really hard at not having a closet that's filled with a bunch of crap that I'm never going to wear. So I would have to say that those three questions are the very, are I guess, number one. Number two is the fabric and number three is the price. I don't mind spending money on clothes if it is a good piece that I know that I am going to wear for a long time. So I am willing to spend more on some things than others. When it comes to things like summer dresses, I tend to spend less because they're so transitional. They only get worn for a very short period of time. What I do tend to spend more money on though is my fall and winter clothing because especially living in the pacific northwest warmth and staying dry are a priority and so i have to be a lot more thoughtful about what i am buying because i just have more winter than i have summer what famous woman inspires me the most that's a tough one because I've got a few style icons, I call them. And I think that the one that is at the top of the list has got to be Katherine Hepburn. Katherine Hepburn has really stood out in my mind because she bucked a lot of the criticisms that she would get for dressing a little bit too androgynously. She just really loved masculine style and there's nothing wrong with that and um, she was always of the thinking it was like men can wear pants why can't women wear pants and be stylish and be okay and not be criticized and all of that jazz so Katherine Hepburn I think is at the top of my list I do have to give an honorable mention though to Charlize Theron. I really, really love her. She reminds me a lot of Katherine Hepburn in a lot of ways because both of them were, you know, both of them are, are badass women. I give the edge to Katherine Hepburn because she's, she was a pioneer, I think, in that respect. There's a question about what my favorite outfits are and why, five of them. So I'm starting out with this outfit here because I associate a lot of my outfits with how I feel. And when I want to feel powerful or when I do feel powerful, I go for a look like this. Leopard print, white wide leg pants, a belt, and a luxury handbag, plus a strappy pair of sandals. The reason that I really, really love this outfit is one, I'm comfortable, but two, I feel really, really well put together. I feel like I have got um, a lot of power behind me when I'm wearing this outfit. I wear it when I want to feel powerful and I don't, or I want to feel confident and I don't. I really, really love this because it does instill that sense of confidence in me and, um, I like that. Okay, so this next outfit I love because I feel confident and sexy in it. It's a beautiful, beautiful maxi dress, uh, or at least it is on me, from Eloquy Elements for Walmart. And I really, really love this dress because it has a deep V neckline. My decolletage is probably one of my best assets, and so I like to show it off, and this dress does it beautifully. It's made of rayon, so it's very cool, it's very comfortable, and I've paired it with these gold wedge sandals that I got from Zara. And it's when you add these modern pieces that it really brings the look up to date. Even though this dress is pretty current, it's a fairly classic style, but with these wedge um, sandals, I think that it's really, really beautiful. Uh, they're very, again, modern because they are a metallic, they've got a wedge heel, they've got a little bit of a squared off toe. And uh, yeah, the look overall is one of my favorites because again, I feel really, really sexy and pretty and ready to go out to on a date or, you know, to an event. 
The next look is another one of those work looks, one of those looks that helps me to feel confident. I really feel very stylish in this outfit. I love this top from Mango. It's a sheer dark floral with my black wide leg pants and this pair of fantastic tan leather mules that I got from Zara and then my Gucci arabesque bag. And what I really, really love about this outfit, again, is that it makes me feel really confident, but because the top is uh, tapered in at the waist a little bit, it gives me a little bit of shape. I feel like I am ready for a fantastic workday in this, and the shoes are incredible. The bag is really, I think, what makes the look, but honestly, even without this bag, with just a plain black bag, I would feel really, really great in it. And it's, again, just those key elements of comfort and confidence and style that I really embrace especially with an outfit like this so this next look is one that is incredibly feminine I think because we've got a full skirt it's a striped skirt from Nordstrom from 1901 is the brand and then the top is a beautiful little blue ditzy floral type top from Old Navy and what I like is that the florals are going in vertical lines along with the stripes and this outfit is all about pattern play I absolutely love it it's one of my favorites it's so comfortable and cool and it looks really really well put together especially when I pair it with a pair of vinyl slides like I've got here from Zara these of course disappear so I absolutely love them they make me look a little bit taller but overall this look is very feminine and that's what draws me to it because it very much speaks to my own personal style I love gingham and that's why I have selected this as one of my favorites this dress from Target it is stunning it is comfortable it is so pretty and I am wearing it with a pair of pearl sandals from Zara um, and uh, these are vinyl pearl sandals if you watch my channel regularly my vlogs you know I wear these shoes quite a bit but the outfit itself I love because it makes me feel feminine and yet again I am comfortable and there is just something about the shearing that they did at the waist of this dress that is incredibly flattering and I would say for a lot of different body types. It really makes me look tapered in at the waist and it emphasizes my body shape really really well I think it, it sits on the body very nicely. I really just love this dress because well gingham is like summer in a dress and there you have it my five favorite outfits and why the best fashion advice that I could that I have received and could ever get there's a couple of things the first one and that I say again and again and again and if you've been a client of mine you know I say it all the time and that is fit is everything. My mom being a seamstress taught me that early, early on that fit makes the difference. When something doesn't quite fit you properly, when you buy it off the rack and it mostly fits, but it could be taken in here, nipped in there. If you make those alterations, the dress ends up looking very, very custom to you. And it is, I mean, it's meant to fit you and you alone. And I love that. I love the fact that you can get a very expensive look just by managing the fit of your clothes. You want your clothes to skim the body. I'm not saying body con. What I am saying is that it should, you know, kind of outline the body softly. That will really bring out your femininity or your body shape and it will help you to look modern and current. You'll always, always, always look your best when your clothes fit you like a glove. Add to that the advice that I would give. A lot of people complain about, I don't want to have to pay for a tailor on top of the buying the clothes, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, when I became a personal stylist, I learned one little tip. When you are budgeting for spending money on clothes, budget 10% for tailoring. So if you have $100 to spend on clothes, you actually have $90 to spend on clothes and $10 to spend on any kind of alterations that you might need. And that way you've already worked the tailoring costs into the cost of the garment. 
So looking at it that way, it makes a world of difference because then you know, okay, actually I only have $90 to spend here and then in case I need to do any kind of tailoring. You try it on and tailoring is not required, fantastic. If you try it on and tailoring is required, fantastic. You've already got your budget set aside for that and it's not as painful. Or... Those are the tag questions for today's video. Thank you, Susan, for inviting me to collaborate. I truly, truly appreciate it. You are a doll. I love you so much and I love your content and I hope that this can measure up. All right, thank you as always for spending a few minutes of your day with me. I appreciate it. Remember to live your life filled with confidence, grace, and style. I will see you in my next upload. Bye.